I, like many others, have received a parcel from the company called Oxbeam Lighting. Now, they did uh, ask me what I wanted, so I've basically got the full setup already on the van. Back at the old spot, it was ice creams, vans, and here. It's the red hours. This you've got a full setup anyway. I've got the uh, large light beam on the front, the small one on the bumper, and the working lights all the way around the van. I basically ordered the same again, and uh, something a little extra for sure purposes only. But let's see what's inside this box. What I do? I'll open it up and set it out on the table next to the van and we'll go for it. And here you are, the full contents of that box. I've received all these lights from Oxbeam Lighting, they're all LED lights. Now, they're to replace the lights I've already have on the van, which mainly suffer from water ingress and well, one or two like LED bulbs blown as well. To the front of you is a 52 inch 300 watt RGB light bar. So obviously that's going to change colour by an app on your phone, obviously for sure purposes only. To the left of you is, well I have eight of these and these are three inch 18 watt working lights, LED working lights and I'm going to fit these today but I do have some reservations about these. Are they any good because look what I have here, the same type exactly the same model just with a different badge on it and I have six of these on my van and these two suffer from water ingress so it would be interesting if these fare up any better if not it's going to be a very awkward video down to the right of you I've also have 12 of these RGB rock lights so these fit on the underside of the van and offer a kaleidoscope of colour upon the floor, blowing from the underside of the van. For sure purposes only. I'll be tackling each light in different videos, but today's video is going to be about the work lights. Are they going to be any good? Here we are. I'm going to open the box up and see what's inside them. Let's hope my nails are sharp enough to open it. Yes, they are. There you go. Obviously you get some kind of yep, instructions which shows you how to mount them. I'm not going to use these mounts by the way. I'm going to use something different that I've already have on the van. You get a lovely sticker which is, I think it's really, yeah it is. It's got some kind of reflective underlayer to it. Now inside the box a couple of plastic bags. So they're like the C-type mounting points. And as I alluded to earlier on, I'm not going to use these because they won't really go on my van. These are quite well packaged by the looks of it. Better than the old ones are. The way the package is done. There you go. Remove the foam covers. And you get a good, better look there. Now they are made of aluminium. They're sort of like clamshell together. And you can see there where it's sealed as well, so it's exactly the same as the old ones. In fact, I'll get the old one. There you go, you can see the water ingress there. Exactly the same construction, just badged up by a different manufacturer. So whether these are any better, the Oxbeam ones, I do not know. But let's find out. Let's do a fair test. This is the old one. Well, it's a brand new one in a box, and this is their packaging. And this is ox beams. Let's see how well they do in one of my tests. I'm just going to revert back to this specification page. Now, I have noticed. IP67 
Hmm. Which is interesting because being IP67, it's telling me what the 6 stands for. They're totally dust proof. And being the 7, it can go into 15 centimetres of water for a period of 30 minutes. I have buckets. I have 15 centimetres of water. Ox beam, competitor. Stopwatch. Let's make a start in fitting these onto the van. So with this particular working light, we do have only one bracket, which is, it's like a C bracket. And within the lights, we have a captive nut. And you want to make sure the mounting bolt is at the front. Like so. And we're just placing the bolt into that captive nut and tighten it up. A bit fiddly. Now I won't tighten it all the way up because you can adjust the position or the angle of the light via that mountain bracket. Let's just get the bottom all to the bottom of it. As you can see there, you can move the light. So if that was bolted onto like where it looks like this bracket is actually for some bull bars because the way I'm going to do it is going to be different. But if you just attach the bull bars at the bottom there, you can move the angle of the light. There you go, down, up. However, as I've alluded to, I'm not going to use this bracket because it would not work on my van. I'm going to use the original brackets that came with the other lights. I originally did buy these mounting brackets which are far more easier to fit. I found these on eBay for this particular light design and if we go on the roof I'll show you how they're fitted. Just a little over 30 minutes. Have they survived? Let's put them down there, get rid of the bucket of water. Well, the competitor, I can't see any water within, or mist, or water ingress within the lens on that. The ox being warm, yeah, looks about the same. I suppose the next test, would it work off 9 volts, as it says, on the specifications. I've got a 9 volt battery. Ox beam. Yep, that's still working. Competitor. Yeah, that's still working. Right. Now that's going to need defrosted. On top of the roof of the van, I've actually drilled a hole for the roof, big enough to fit a rib nut. But before I clamp that rib nut, I did apply some non drying bedding sealant right away around the rib nut and clamped it into position. And the bottom half of my bracket, I've applied some non drying bedding sealant on the threads of that bolt. I'm just going to apply some more within that hole. This stringy stuff that is. And I'm just going to bolt that bracket into position. So that's bottom half of that bracket in position. 
Now, the other half of the bracket, they come with this, um, we'll call it a mounting block. And that wants to be mounted on the underside of the light. So I'll screw this Allen key bolt into that captive nut with inside that light and tighten that up. Just making sure it's all central. And now I'll just slide that mountain block inside the prongs of this bottom mountain bracket and fit four allen key bolts into that mountain block and that will clamp it onto the bottom mountain bracket. It does a bit of a fiddly job mind you. There you go, there's two bolts on either side of, of that mounting block. I've left them loose because as soon as I get the lights wired up, I can turn them on in the night time and adjust the light beam pattern to whatever position I need it in. And it'd just be the case of tying them four bolts on that mounting block, just to lock the working light into position. Like so. <laughs> it's still going to break open. Anyway, I removed this from the fridge freezer at 9 o'clock this morning. It's now 10 to 3 in the afternoon. So uh, these lights have been in here for a good, around about 30 hours now. But are they still working being entombed in this ice? This one's ox beam, as you can see, ox beam, and your one is the competitor. Let's put the battery on it. Oh, competitor, still working. Is there an LED LED out? Oh, be hard to tell. I can see all the LEDs in the ox beam. Ooh, they're definitely all working. Let's try it again on the competitor. That does seem to be a bit dimmer. Well, I suppose we won't know until this fully melts. With the new ox beam light, I'm gonna solder up the wiring, the pre-existing wiring from the van. I'm gonna put the shrink wraps on first. That I usually forget until it's too late. And moving the one over top, slide that down. Awkward. Slide it down a bit more. There you go. So obviously wrapping the core of the wire positive to positive. Try to do a neat job of this. and ground to ground let's cut off the excess now in a position I can solder these connections up oh god my Soldering iron's a bit dirty. Let's get some, some solder on there. This 
This is where I start shaking because I've had no breakfast today. Now eating up the wire and placing the solder onto the core of the wire. Give it a bit of a flick. Do the same on the positive. There we go. Just eating up the core of the wire again. And applying the solder to the wire. Give that a bit of a flick to get rid of the excessive amount of solder I've put on there. Oh, I still need, need that burning die. Just gonna slide the heat shrink tubing over the solder I've just done. Same with a positive. Oh, it's a bit fiddly because it's actually shrunk down a bit unfortunately. There you go, it's going across now. Try and get it in the middle. Now I'm just going to heat shrink these wraps down. Just trying to make it more waterproof more than anything else to protect you from the elements. Try not to burn it. There you go, you can see that rubber protective layer is shrunk. Now I've got another layer to put on. I'll shrink that down. Just to make an easier job and keep the, the inner core of the cable kept together. And once I've shrunk these down, I'll show apply some insulation tape around the cable. And I can pop it back into this conduit. So that's it all bolted on, so it's nice and secure. And all there is to do now is just put a tie strap on that clamp there and a couple around there just to keep that cable in. And that's it done. I've got to do that another five more times. Now obviously, I didn't just put them in the deep freezer. I ran over them. Kind of didn't go to plan. So that's the first set destroyed. Luckily I had a second set and I did pack the van on top of them. Did they survive that? Well, seeing they're made out of aluminium, which one's the toughest? Competitor or Oxbeam? Let's do the competitor one first. Right, I hope I don't punch my tire on this. <laughs> That's a thing that's crushing the laminate flooring. Right, that's got the full weight of the van on top of the competitor one. So all the weights on top of the competitor light, but is it still working? Okay. Sleep you up. Right, so 
survive that. Ox beam. Is this one still working? Yeah. Let's go again. Relatively unscathed. Excellent. So they've had the van packed on top of them. They survived that. They've been in the freezer for the past 24 hours. Have they survived that? We've got all six working lights now fitted to the van roof, all wired up. I've got my Victron being a sap ready, so I can turn these lights on remotely from my phone via the control panel I have inside the van. Just bear in mind they are 18 watts each so don't expect the sun to come back out again but now it's dark we can give them a whirl. Right, shall we see if they work? Bright as the old ones. I suppose only time could tell after a bit of weathering. So I managed to retrieve these from that ice block. It did take two days to melt because we had some quite cold days here in Lincolnshire. And uh, this is the competitor. Oh dear. As you can tell, there's water ingress in that one. Hmm. It's a wipe. Now that's on the outside. It's not misted up or I can't tell any signs of water ingression in there. Looking promising. So they've had the weight of the van upon them. They've been in a block of ice for the past 45 hours and they've been submerged in 15 centimetres of water over a period of 30 minutes. Have they both survived? Competitor. Oh dear. There's an LED light out there. So one's gone already. <laughs> now for the ox speed. Now this is going to be a bit awkward if this uh, doesn't work at all. Whoa. But it does. Look at that. Well, ox beam wins. Far superior. Well, can't complain about that. The bright enough. So that's how I fitted my work lights. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.